Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. Today's Windows tutorial is going to be covering uh, adding an email account to Outlook. And in this particular case, we'll be using Outlook 2016, but most of the versions of it are going to be right along the same lines with some of the features and buttons just in a little bit different place. But the basic setup of an email will follow these same guidelines. And the way we'll be doing it today is I have an email address that you have to have particular server and port settings to enter in. And that'll be the case if you have an email that's from an internet provider or if you have a custom domain, things like that. So it's not like Gmail and Yahoo where a lot of times it'll automatically pull in those settings. So we're going to set this one up as a POP3 a little bit differently. So we'll get right into it. And to start out, if this is your first screen and you're not already in the Outlook, um, it'll come to email account or manual setup. Now, if you do have custom settings that you've got to put in that they provided you with, and I would recommend just having it on notepad, the server settings and everything that you'll need handy and available. You'll actually need to go down here to manual setup or additional server types and hit next. And in this case, it's going to be a pop three we'll be doing. So I'm going to click on pop and next. And this will give you where you can start entering in your information. So right here, we'll just put it in savvy. The email address that we're going to be using. And the account type, which of course is pop three. We won't be using IMAP. Then we'll just do a little copy and pasting to make it a little simpler. And the outgoing, I've got SMTP auth, if I can copy it. And if it won't let you right click and copy and paste, just use your control C, control V, to put all this in there. And the login information will be your username and password. Let me grab my password. And let's go ahead and make sure you have it to remember the password. Your settings might say you need some kind of logon using SPA or secure password authentication. In my case, I don't. Now, before you hit test account settings, notice it hasn't asked for any uh, port settings or anything on authentication. So let's go to more settings first. The first tab, the general tab. Uh, there won't be much you need to put in unless you're wanting to add additional info right here. What we're concerned about is the outgoing servers. And if I look into the settings that my ISP provided me, I'll see that it says requires authentication and that the username and password will be the same as the incoming mail server. So I see the first thing right here is that I have the option to click that for my server or the outgoing server requiring authentication. And I can also check mark same settings. If for any reason your outgoing server settings are different on the authentication, it gives you the option to enter in a username and password here. So we're going to leave that check marked and then we're going to hit advanced. And this is where the server ports will come into play. And I'll look at my settings and the server port that they provide me for my incoming is 110 and that's already there. And you'll notice to ask about if you need SSL on mine, it particularly says no SSL for incoming or outgoing. So I can leave that unchecked marked outgoing server port. Mine asks for server port 587 for outgoing. So let's change that to 587 or whatever yours is. And I don't need any kind of encryption. And lastly, and this is a big feature that's missing from the Windows 10 mail app that's built in, is how long you want to keep a copy on the server. Now, the reason this is very relevant is that a lot of the ISP provide email accounts have a very limited size. And this one that I'm using in particular only has a 20 megabit limit or excuse me, megabyte limit. And you know that can add up really quick, uh, especially with any attachments. So if I want to pull off the server, which is the actual website you'd log into for your email if you weren't using Outlook, you can set that to where it'll take it off that server and free up space quicker. Uh, for this one, we'll just go ahead and leave it 14 days. 
and you can always leave it at the default and adjust it later on. But you can either test your account settings now or hit next because it'll test them either way. And I see it completed successfully for logging on to my incoming and the test email was completed. So I'll close that. And once it tells you you have everything, if you have another account you need to add, go ahead and go through that process right here. Let's finish this, and if it did, with POP3, it should pull in a couple of test messages I have on the email server right now. And let's see if it's going to hit them or not. Ah, down here, Savvy Test. Click on the inbox, and yes, here are the test messages it sent, and these are the ones I had sitting on the server. So I can see it pulled everything in correctly. If for any reason you didn't see all of your messages pop up that you had um, on your email and you did it through a POP3 account like this, uh, you can go back in and double check your settings. And if I remember right, I believe it's under File and Account Settings and then Account Settings again. And this will look a little bit more like Outlook 2007-2010. Uh, where you can click on the account and repair it, change it, whatever you might need. Sometimes you'll have to go in here if you've changed your password on your email and it didn't get changed in Outlook. You can click on the email account and hit change and go right back into all those settings we just went through. But guys, uh, if the video helped, uh, try to give me a like and subscribe if you don't mind. And if you have any questions or comments, just hit me up in the comment section. And as always, chive on.